Hey, you guys, welcome to The Rachel Cruz Show. So today we're gonna look at 10 fascinating facts about money that might just change the way you think about it. I love seeing facts because I'm like, okay, this is what's actually happening out in the world. And again, it helps me with my perspective sometimes when I can get down and out to be like, okay, this is what is really happening. So facts are your friends, as my friend Dr. John Deloney says. So let's dive in. Are you ready? Let's start with the big bucks. So did you know that the overwhelmingly majority of millionaires in the U.S., 79% did not receive any inheritance at all from their parents or other family members? Yeah, eight out of 10. And while only 21% received some inheritance and only 3% received an inheritance of a million dollars or more. And those are net worth millionaires. So this is what people own minus what they owe equals a million dollars or greater. A lot of them are self-made, you guys. Like it is so empowering to know that you can still go out and win today. And a lot of these people, again, it's not like big flashy things that they're doing with their money. They're investing in their 401k, they're paying off their house. Like they're doing really smart things with their money and they're winning. So it should just give you some hope that you can do that too. All right, number two, similarly, eight out of 10 millionaires come from families at or below middle income level. And only 2% of millionaires surveyed said they came from an upper income family which again gives hope that like, yeah, regardless of how you grew up, yes, some people start further along the path, but it shows like you can do this no matter where you came from, what you're doing now. If you implement good money habits, smart money habits that you're looking to the future versus just the present, that you can win. And if you have not picked up my dad, Dave Ramsey's book, Baby Steps Millionaires, make sure to because we talk about the survey so much in that book and he writes about, you know, not only people's stories, but the plan, for you to walk down to become a Baby Steps Millionaire, because it is possible. All right, we have been talking about millionaires, but what about billionaires? So out of 8 billion people on the planet, there are only 3,311 billionaires. Hmm, I don't know why, that's kind of shocking. I kind of would have thought there was more. I don't know why, 3,000 doesn't seem like a ton. But granted, it, we're talking billionaires, which is, a lot of millions, like it's just a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So the US has the most billionaires of any country at 975, and the next closest is China with around 400. All right, up next, something a little bit more common. Nearly seven in 10 reward credit card holders sit on unused cashback points or miles. So you guys, the credit card companies are banking on you not cashing in and getting your rewards and they're banking on you, racking up credit card debt and paying interest and making them a lot of money. So this is one place that people kind of get so, so mad because they're like, what? You say no credit cards? And listen, do people have a credit card and pay it off every month and use their Southwest points or whatever, their miles? Like, yeah, some people do, but this is proof that a lot of people don't. So you end up, this is true statistically, that you spend more on a credit card because in the back of your head, you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna get points and rewards. And this just proves that not everyone uses those. So you're spending more money to do nothing. And again, paying interest if you're not paying off your bill. So be aware of that. Okay, here's another fun one about credit cards. As of 2022 Q4, the average credit card interest rate is at 20.4%. So that's literally the highest it's ever been. So just imagine putting a $1,000 iPhone on your credit card and that means you will pay $200 in interest to do that. So. It is, it is bizarre how much those interest rates have gone up, you guys. And what happens again, if you don't pay your bill in full, you are paying interest. And people that are struggling when it comes to inflation, they're struggling with their budgets or their jobs, all of it, they rely on credit cards to be the thing that's their safety net. And I want you to rely on your money. That's why I don't want you to be tempted with credit cards, have a debit card, get an emergency fund in place, and all of this will help you avoid 20.4% in interest. Ooh. All right, before I tell you about the next fact, I wanna tell you about one of our sponsors, Christian Healthcare Ministries. So I know we're all looking for ways to save, especially on healthcare costs. So do yourself a favor and check out Christian Healthcare Ministries. It's a biblically-based health cost sharing that could keep your budget under control. So learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. 
Now, next up, the average American spends $276 a month on impulse buys alone. So that comes out to $3,312 a year and $198,720 in a lifetime, almost $200,000 in just impulse buying. So again, not all of that is bad. Things are going to come up that you forget about, but this idea that you're just gonna buy on impulse, on a whim, whenever you feel like it, ends up costing you money, so much money. So you just wanna be aware of, number one, why are you spending it? What's going on? Because. Here's what's crazy, two out of three impulse buys happen when you're in bed on your phone. And I'm guilty of that too. You're scrolling, you see something. So just wait 24 hours. I sometimes add to cart and not purchase and wait like two or three days. And if I still want it, then I think about it and think, okay, you know, do I have the money? Is it in the budget? All those questions. But sometimes it's just that impulse and you don't even want it. And then 24, 48 hours later, you, you don't want it anymore. So just add to cart and wait 24 hours and see if you still want it. Okay, here's one about a bigger purchase in life, your car. So a brand new car loses somewhere between nine and 11% the moment you drive it off the lot. Bump, bump, onto the road. And with a $30,000 new car, that's $3,000 gone, just like that before you even get home. Now, after one year, a new car is worth about 20% less than what you bought it. After five years, a new car will lose around 60% of its value. So here's the deal with cars. I never want you to lease a car. I don't want you to go and take out a huge car loan because you are you're paying interest on something. You're going into debt for something that is going down in value. Okay, so it's just not a good financial picture in general. Now, if you have a million dollar net worth or more, then you mathematically can take the hit of that $3,000 the moment you drive it off the lot. But if you don't have that, I mean, get a reliable used car. You guys, there are so many great cars out there that someone else took that hit and you could get a two, three, four, five-year-old car and it's still a great car and it will save you so much money. And remember, your car is to get you from point A to point B. That's what it's there for. And sadly, in our world today, it's become our identity. It's become so much more than that. But when you look at it on a really tactical standpoint, that will help you save so much money. Take the emotion out and just say, okay, if I didn't care what people thought about this car, then you're probably not gonna buy a crazy expensive car or go take a car loan on a nice car. And it's just like, okay, I can save up and pay cash for a reliable used car, which is a great plan. All right, another interesting fact about your car is that the average new car payment is around $700 and the average used car payment is around $515. And again, this is, What's crazy is you are paying that per month, which could free up $700 in your budget. And, you, and if you have two car payments for two brand new cars, which a lot of people do, it's $1,400. Like that's a lot of money per month that's just going out to car payments. And again, with interest and an asset that's going down in value, it's just an absolute mess. So instead of that, invest it. Let your money work for you versus paying interest. It's a way to think about it. All right, this one, this one's a little scary, this fact, but one in four working Americans have zero dollars in retirement savings. Not a fun thing to think about, but here's the deal. Retirement is going to happen, right? Like if you live a great life, and I think the life expectancy in America I saw was like 79 years old, 80 years old. So when you get to that point, like you're not gonna wanna work, right? Like everyone, most people, it's like, okay, when I get to retirement age, I wanna be able to retire. So you wanna be able to plan for the future. And I get it, if you're not a saver and you're like, you have to put money away that you could be using now, it is hard. Like when we fund, you know, Roth IRAs and our 401k, all of that, I have to tell myself future Rachel is gonna be so happy <laughs> that present Rachel is doing this. But it is hard just to put money away and know that you're not gonna see it for decades. But when you become older and that retirement age starts creeping in, you can have peace. So I want you out of debt, have a fully funded emergency fund, and then start funding 15% of your income into retirement. All right, the last interesting fact, which kind of goes back to the last one we were talking about, according to the Social Security Administration, Social Security benefits are only meant to replace about 40% of your income when you're not working which means if you solely rely on Social Security, you're gonna have to cut back your lifestyle by 60%. <sighs> so please do not rely on the government to be your financial planner. Do not rely on the government to be the thing that's going to help you in retirement because some people would even say Social Security's not even gonna be there when, we, when I get to retirement age. 
again, you could argue that. But the point is, don't rely on them. You take control of your money. You say, hey, I'm gonna get out of debt, get an emergency fund in place, and start funding my own retirement for your future self, and that will give you such peace. All right, I know we covered a lot of these facts, but again, I just want you to understand like what is going on in the world. We hear some lies around you know, wealthy people or debt, whatever it is. And when you get the facts around you, it does help you kind of steer, hmm, what do I need to be doing? Or I don't want to be that, or I want to be that. So what are the steps I need to take to avoid or to help me get to this financial goal? So the biggest part is to understand that you're the one that has control of your money. You're the one that has control of your spending. You're the one that has control of your income. And you have the ability to wake up and make decisions about your money that's either going to further you or push you back financially. Because ultimately, I want you to have financial peace. I want you to have this confidence with your money to be able to say, man, I can sleep good at night. I can, you know, do the things that, that I enjoy and that I want to do. I want to change my family tree. I want to give generously. And all of that is so, so key when you understand that you have the ability to make money decisions that can help you. And you guys can do it. You can do it. All right, thank you so much for watching today. And make sure to share this video with a friend who you think will find it a little fun with all these interesting money facts. And remember to take control of your money and create a life you love.